All righty. So my name is Jacqueline Brinkhouse, and I'm going to be your panel moderator for tonight. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items for you. A recording of this webinar will be sent to the email you use to register. The recording will also be accessible on the event page and on our YouTube channel within the next week. Please utilize the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask your questions. Our Harvard Summer School team is working diligently to answer your questions, and we will elevate any appropriate questions to our panelists and directors tonight. We will not utilize the raise hand feature during this session. Tonight, we will briefly dive into our Harvard Summer School program options, then explore a day in the life of a Harvard Summer School student with our three panelists, and finally conclude with a live Q&A session incorporating our two program directors, Dr. Jacqueline Newcomb and Mr. Bill Hollinger. I will now give a brief overview of the college programs for high school students. In our programs, students will take a college level course, getting to experience what college academics are really like. We have students attend from nearly all 50 US states and 70 plus countries. So you'll get to meet and make friends with other driven students from around the world. Completing a Harvard Summer School program can help with college admissions in several ways. You'll demonstrate to admissions committees your ability to succeed in a rigor rigorous college course. You can gain tools to navigate the college admissions process successfully through our college readiness activities, such as workshops, on how to write your college admissions essay and panels on how to choose the right college. We even have a we even host a series of panels with, with admissions officers. You can also use your experience here as inspiration for a college essay. Many students say how their programs gave them confidence or inspired them to pursue a certain field of study. While here, you will also get to experience being a college student before you actually go to college. You'll have to keep track of assignments, ask for help from instructors, or perhaps do things for the first time like laundry or traveling alone. But you'll also get to control your schedule, deciding when to study, what you wanna do in your free time, and where to explore in the greater Boston area. We have three great program options you'll get to experience. You have to just choose which one is right for you. We have the two week pre-college program where you'll take one non-credit course and live on campus for two weeks. We have a four credit, four week secondary school program where you'll take one four credit course and live on campus for four weeks. And we have a flexible seven week secondary school program where you can live on campus, commute from home or study 100% online in one or two four credit courses. Of all these courses, our programs require students to be at least 16 years old by June 22nd, 2024, and not turn 19 years old before July 31st, 2024. Our two-week pre-college program accepts applications from students graduating high school in 2025 or 2026. On the other hand, our four and seven-week secondary school programs accept applications from students graduating high school in 2024, 2025, or 2026. Our programs have different visa requirements, so we encourage any international students to go to our website to see their options. We're going to post that link in the chat now, so you can go there to check out what those requirements are. And lastly, need-based need financial scholarships are available to U.S. citizens and permanent residents only. Now that you know a little bit more about our programs, I'd like to introduce two former students and a proctor from last summer. All righty. We're gonna first start off with Sophie. Sophie, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hello everyone, I'm Sophie. I did the pre-college program in summer 2022. I graduated high school this past June and I'm currently a first year at Harvard College. Um, one of my favorite things about the pre-college program was exploring Harvard Square and Boston with the people I met and the friends I made during the program. And it was one of my best ex summer experiences throughout high school. So I'm really excited to talk about it with you all today. Awesome, Sophie. Thank you. And I have to say, Harvard Square is definitely one of my favorite places in Boston, too. So thank you. And next, we will welcome Michaela. Hi, everyone. My name is Michaela. I am 17 and I'm currently a junior um, at Viewpoint High School in California. I attended the program last summer, so 2023, um, the secondary summer program. Um, 
and I took the psychology of cults and writing the personal essay classes, um, which I really enjoyed. They were very interesting and unique classes um, that I was really excited to take through Harvard. So I'm excited to talk about my experience as well. Awesome. Thanks, Michaela. I, I definitely want to hear more about those classes. They sound super interesting. Uh, and last but not least, we have our secondary school proctor, Luke. Luke, if you want to tell us a bit more about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Luke. Um, I'm currently a senior at Harvard studying math, and I was a proctor this past summer um, for the secondary school program. And I have a couple of favorite memories. Um, I really liked my proctors. They were also funny, and it was, I had a great time being a proctor. Um, but I had some really great memories doing like Just Dance. Um, there was a talent show that was really cool. Um, and then one thing I wrote about in about myself was the best part of every day was going to the dining hall and my proctors would be like, look who it is when I walked in. And I always thought that was really funny. That's awesome. And you'll have to tell us a bit more about the uh, the talent show. I went myself and there were a wide range of talents. So I have to up my game. But with that, thank you all for the introductions. Uh, we're going to jump right into the panel. So our first question tonight is for Sophie and Michaela. And Sophie, we'll start with you first. How did your program impact you? Yeah, sure. So uh, COVID hit my freshman year of high school, so I didn't get to do any kind of away summer programs. The summer's after my freshman and sophomore years. So it was my first experience kind of going away from home for an extended period of time and being independent and having freedom, um, which was a really new experience, but something I had a lot of fun with. And building those schools has definitely helped now that I'm in college. But I think one of the biggest impacts on me was that I got to explore a topic that I was really interested in rather than taking a class in high school that was required. Um, and as you mentioned, uh, it did uh, influence what I want to study in college. And I did write one of my college essays about it. So it really just kind of changed my perspective on what was out there for me to be able to pursue. Awesome. Fantastic. Yeah, it seems like you had a breadth of experiences at Harvard's, Harvard Summer School, both academic but also personal growth. Thank you. Uh, and Michaela, how did your program, the secondary school program, um, impact you? Yeah, so it was a very special experience as I was a rising junior, so um, not really even an upperclassman yet. And it was just a very like unusual, unique experience, very different from high school. Um, and it was just really special to experience like two college level courses where I was um, really in classes with um, some adults, some like graduate students. So I was I really got to like communicate with different ages of people um, and just like experience um, Harvard and like working with their professors, even though I was online, there were so many opportunities um, beyond just the classroom, too, that I was able to experience. Um, and I just felt like I left with a lot of like special skills that I feel a lot more confident for when I'm going off to college as well. Awesome. That's fantastic. And it's great to hear that uh, you, you know, pursued your, the online option and you still were able to get all of these valuable skills, friendships, et cetera. And, and Luke, uh, what have sh students shared about how their programs impacted them with you? Um, what I saw was that like, they became very, very close with each other very quickly. And those friendships were extremely strong. Um, when they had to leave, it was it was really upsetting. I was upset. <laughs> and I was like, no, like the summer's ending. Um, and that to me was, it was surprising. I didn't think like, oh yeah, I'm going to have these students for seven weeks. They became like best friends um, and they still talk with each other. It's really, it was a really, really special program in that way. Um, but post the program, once you kind of exist, as a pseudo college student, but as a, I guess a summer school student at the Harvard Summer School, you're going back to high school is going to be so much easier for you because you learn how to manage your time so much more effectively. Um, and so high school is going to seem a lot easier and that will help you when you're doing your college applications because you're gonna be able to manage that on, in addition to high school much easier. Awesome, thank you. That's a great point. Um, and a follow-up for you, Sophie. So I know that you are a freshman at Harvard College. What skills do you think Harvard Summer School, your pre-college program, um, built to kind of help you succeed uh, now that you're at Harvard? Yeah, there are definitely a few skills. Like Luke mentioned, just time management. Um, when you're in high school, you're so used to just being in school like 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. and then going home and doing all your homework and fitting in other 
extracurricular activities. But when you have classes kind of like spread out throughout the day and gaps in between and sometimes like a whole morning off, you have to learn a lot more time management skills and getting your work done because it's very much easier to just let it all build up to the last minute. I think a second skill that was really useful is for my class, so much of the work that was assigned outside of class was group work and we had to meet and work on it together, which one was great for bonding and making friends because we got to spend so much time together um, outside of class, but that has definitely been useful now that I'm in college because so many uh, assignments for classes here are also designed to be worked on in a group. So just learning how to collaborate with other people in that way um, and that style of learning has been super helpful. Awesome. Yeah, those seem like great skills that will help any college student. Um, and on the same kind of vein, Michaela, I know that you've only been back to school probably about a month or two now, but how would you say doing the uh, secondary school program has already um, helped make junior year of high school a little bit easier for you? It's definitely helped make it easier um, because it was a very like special, like unique experience from high school. Um, like having to really reach out to your teachers on your own when you had questions and kind of just like work closer with the material and understanding of the material. Um, and I think that working like more in depth through those Harvard classes makes like it easier to apply these special like skills that you kind of need um, as you go more in depth in junior year and more communication skills. That's very helpful with your teachers. All very true. Well, thank you all for that. Um, next question again is for our two students. So how did you choose between your two pro the two programs we offer? Why did you decide to do your pre-college program versus the secondary school program? And um, how did you decide which choice was right for you? Uh, Michaela, we'll start off with you this time. Why did you decide to do the secondary school program and why did you decide to do it online? So I decided to do the seven week secondary program instead of the pre-college program. Um, first of all, because I was very interested in getting college credit that I could hopefully use in college so that I would already be like more advanced in um, specific topics that I'm really interested in. Um, and I decided to take it online because I was on the fence between going, which seemed like in person, which seemed very um, special, like interesting and fun. But for me, um, doing it online was a better choice because I had a lot um, of like other extracurriculars and stuff that I was doing at home at the same time. And so doing it online, I was able to also participate in other activities that summer um, while also getting a lot out of the program. And there were a lot of online activities to do too. So it wasn't just like I was limited to just the classes. Awesome. That's a great point. And Sophie, why did you choose to do the pre-college program? Yeah, so I chose the two-week pre-college program for a couple of reasons. Uh, the first was just for my personal goals, getting college credit wasn't as important to me. Um, but being the summer before my senior year of high school, I had a lot of other things going on, both in getting ready for my schoolwork and college applications throughout the summer. And since I was on campus, when I was there, I was kind of busy all the time between my class, doing work, the activities they provide, spending time with people. And I knew that if I did the seven week program, I would be like more stressed about getting everything else I needed to do done. So I decided to do the two week program so that I could just fully immerse in it and have a really great time and then come out of it and have the rest of the summer to work on everything else I needed to get done. Perfect. Yeah. And it seems like for both of you, you found like a, an option that worked with your flexible schedule and you had some great benefits from it. So that's fantastic to hear. And my next question is, and we've talked about it a little bit, um, which course did you take or courses and how did you choose which course to take? Uh, Sophie, we'll start with you first. Yeah, so the course I took was called Math and Social Justice. What it focused on was different uh, mathematical ideas and one how mathematical programs have caused social justice issues and then how we can use them to fix those same issues. Um, I read the description for that course and I was immediately super interested in it. Um, I was definitely looking for a more STEM oriented course. Um, and the one thing I really loved about that was it involved learning math, but it also involved applying it in ways that were very important for real world issues. And we got to talk a lot about the real world issues as well. And we didn't just spend all of our time 
doing math. Um, and it's, I was kind of also interested in like an ethics side of things, but I wasn't totally sure about doing a full philosophy course. So I found it to be a really great mixture of those two things and something that was seemed approachable and manageable, but also challenging in a fun way. Yeah, that sounds like a great course. I wish I could take it, but a little too late now for me. <laughs> uh, and Michaela, I, I know you briefly mentioned which courses you took, but do you mind sharing which ones uh, you took again and why you decided to choose those? Yeah, so first of all, the, I'll like do them one at a time. I took um, the psychology of cults, which was very unique and interesting. Um, I knew like going in that I wanted to take um, some type of course on psychology because that's um, the topic I'm interested in and kind of the field I want to go into. Um, but looking at the like wide variety of courses for psychology, there were some that I need that needed requirements I hadn't fulfilled and others that um, like I could take. But when I was looking at those compared to the psychology of cults um, and reading the description of each one, which really helped me decide, I saw that the psychology of cults um, really got to go into this really interesting topic of cults while also learning um, all of like the special themes and topics of psychology. So kind of like um, what Sophie was saying about like applications in the real world, I was able to apply um, the psychology to this like real like topic in the world of cults. Um, and it was really interesting. And I learned how to read research articles and all like the different skills that you would want from a psychology class, but like with a special twist on it. And then the writing, the personal essay class I took because um, I wanted to develop my writing skills more. And especially when I'm getting ready um, to apply to college and writing my college essays, it seemed like it would be really helpful for that. And it was, I felt like I really got a lot like more in depth with my writing from it, but it also went beyond that too. Um, and we also kind of learned about journalism and publishing um so I felt like I got even more out of it than I was hoping for so it was they were both really great and I I like took a lot of skills away from them awesome and a follow-up question to that is how challenging were these courses um were they what were they what you were expecting were they a bit different um if you could just talk a little bit about the the rigor of these courses um we can start off with you Michaela so for both of my courses, the um, workload was a little different. I didn't know exactly what to expect, but um, the psychology course had a lot of reading, um, which at first was kind of hard because the like research articles were a little like you had to like focus on them more. But through reading them, I like gained a lot of skills and understanding of how to read them and like understand them better. And so as like the course went on, it became um, not as much because I could read them in a quicker amount of time. Um, and the writing the personal essay was not as much work. There was like some writing essays, peer review, um, but it was pretty like not, it wasn't too much. I would say you could definitely take that and another course because um, you also got to do some of the work in class, which was nice. Um, and for me, the thing that was the most important was that if I was confused about like some work or was having a challenge, both of my professors were very open and available, which made it like any challenges made it doable. And instead of it just being like a hard challenge that you wouldn't enjoy, it was a challenge that was like fun and something to accomplish and learn from. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great point. And I hear from so many students that at Harvard Summer School, they learn how to reach out to their professors for help instead of you know, their instructors in their high schools coming to them noticing something, they learn how to take the initiative and ask for help themselves, which I think is a valuable skill in high school, college, and beyond. So that's great. And Sophie, anything you'd like to add about the rigor of your course? Yeah, so I did find the course challenging, but I thought it was very different than a challenging course in high school might be. Um, because there was no pressure about getting a grade or anything like that, because for the pre-college, it's just um, like you complete it. So I found it was like the learning without worrying about assessments or anything like that. So even when it was challenging, I could complete it and focus on actually learning and understanding material rather than be worried about that I wasn't learning it fast enough or well enough for whatever was coming up. I'll also echo the part about 
you know, the professors are available, they have office hours, the TAs are available to help you and answer questions as well. And I would definitely agree that learning how to reach out to them when you need help is a very useful skill, not just during the program, but later in high school and in college. Um, and to go back to what I said before, one of the best parts of my experience was working on the assignments with my classmates. Um, I have a lot of memories during the program of like sitting outside when it like at night when it's dark out with like five of us just all working on like a one page assignment together. Um, so even when it was challenging, we got through it by working together and discussing. Um, and that's also how we became really close throughout the program. Awesome. Well, I think sitting outside doing an assignment in Harvard Yard is the best way to do an assignment. So awesome. And now transitioning over to Luke, could you tell us Number one, what exactly a proctor is and some of the common struggles students uh, come to you for um, over the summer. So I and the other proctors are people, well, college students, Harvard college students who um, live in the same dorms. And we, our main goal is to make sure that everyone is safe. Um, you know, safety is our number one priority, but beyond safety, we also want to make sure that you're having a good time while you're here. Like you're at Harvard, we want, it's it's a school and you're going to learn a lot, but it doesn't all have to just be like work. We do want you to have fun. So we hold study breaks um, where we'll get like pizza or ice cream and we'll do that once a week. Um, and then we also help plan along with the other summer school staff, um, cool events for all of you to participate in. Um, so really we're here for you for like anything that you might need when you're in the dorms. Like if you're like, I need some item, where can I go find it? We've been living here for a couple of years. We can help you out in the terms of like, how do you live as a student on this campus? Any questions that you have there, you just call your proctor and we can help you out. We also are there for like, if you need to go for some reason to the hospital, um, we will have a proctor on call and we will make sure that you're not going there alone. So any type of thing like that, we are always here to make sure that you're safe and that you're well. But we also want you to be more than well, we want you to do really well. <laughs> Um, but and the second question was any common struggles, right? Yeah. So, okay. The first two that come to mind, the first is silly and, um, Sophie, you kind of addressed this, but I saw with my proctees that there were, there was some hesitation with reaching out to professors in the beginning, like, oh, I'm a high school student and I have a professor who is a Harvard professor. And that's totally valid. Like that feels really scary, but you also have to acknowledge that they wouldn't be teaching at the Harvard Summer School if they didn't want to interact with you. They genuinely do want to interact with you, and I do encourage you to go to office hours if you have any questions. Um, the second one is more, the second one is, I guess, becoming an adult in that you learn how to plan your days. When we were saying like, oh, you become better at time management earlier, what that really means is like you're able to sit down either in the beginning of the day or the night before, like, what am I going to do with my day tomorrow or with the rest of my day today? in a way that's going to bring me towards my goals because now it's no longer like oh i have class starting at the same time every day and i have class ending at the same time every day and then i do my whatever is after school um and then i go to bed it's now like you might have classes only on three out of the five days of the week they might start on different start at different times you have to incorporate when are you going to eat into those times and when you're going to be doing your homework but also when you're going to have fun so what i would recommend um and what i saw as successful was pl loosely planning your week in terms of the summer school will give you really like a lot of activities. There are trips that you can do like whale watching. There are trips into Boston, like seeing the Red Sox. Um, there are sports events that happen like in Chabrillo, um, kickball and basketball. And those happen on consistent schedules. You can figure out loosely, where am I going to have fun during this week? And then you can fill in the rest with where am I going to do my schoolwork so that I can be successful in my classes. Um, it's really about learning to plan. How am I, go what, where am I going to spend my time so that I can be successful in all the areas I want success in. Fantastic. That's some great advice. Um, and kind of on that same, on that same note, Sophie, what was your typical day like at um, your pre-college program? Yeah. So my class was noon to three, Monday to Friday. So on a typical weekday, I would get up, I get to sleep in a little bit because I didn't have to be in class till noon. Um, I was able to grab breakfast with either people living near me or, or my classmates um, and possibly get some of my work done in the morning. And then we would grab lunch to go from the dining hall and go eat somewhere um, in Harvard Yard before heading up to our class at noon. 
Um, and then after class at three, there were many different options, uh, depending on how much we had to do that night. But we would like get together and work on the assignment. As I said, we would also walk around in Harvard Square. Depending on how much time we'd have, we could take the train into Boston as well. Um, and then on some nights, there were evening activities. Luke mentioned some of them. Uh, some of my favorite memories were like, we did go whale watching. I remember that one well. We were able to take a trip into Newport, Rhode Island on the weekend. Um, and then another one, one of my favorites, we had a scavenger hunt um, around the campus one weekday night. So uh, the, what we did in the nights depended on what was available, but there was very little like just sitting around with nothing to do. It was always either doing more for your classes or getting to spend time with other students and engaging in these activities to get to know the area and get to know everyone else. Um, and then we'd go to bed and, and wake up and do it the next day. But there was never like days where we were super stressed, like, oh my God, we just have to do work the whole day. Um, it was a really great experience and, and very well balanced. Awesome. I think that's a key uh, quality there is the balance between academics and then also learning and exploring outside the classroom. So great to hear that you were able to experience both worlds. And Michaela, um, I know you were an online student. So could you walk us through um, your your day as a Harvard Summer School student and maybe some of the online um, activities outside of class that you participated in? Yes. So for me, my classes, I had them each one twice a week on separate days. So one was Monday and Wednesday and the other was Tuesday and Thursday. Um, so there was some time in between classes to do work. They were each three hours. So depending on the time of the class, usually I would get up in the morning, have breakfast, then get dressed and come to my room and go on class very easy. Like not like you don't really have to go anywhere. Um, and then I would be on the computer for around three hours but we would get some breaks so it wouldn't be too like staring at the computer because that can be really tiring um and it was also very interactive so it wasn't just talking and like I mean just listening to a lecture and then after class was over I would have lunch do some stuff with my friends since I was um, at home I could do that do other um, extracurriculars I had do like a little bit of work and then spend some time with my family, which was also um, really nice for me. And then there were always um, like weekly newsletters coming out with information about what activities were being offered online. So you could sign up and then I would just, depending on what time it was, I would go to those like as well, like on top of class. Um, and I went to a lot of um, college preparation courses which were really um interesting and very helpful I feel a lot more confident in my application I learned about writing um the college essays and I also got to hear from different colleges on panels which was also really interesting and a great resource since it can be hard to get into like listen to colleges like that Fantastic. Yeah, it seems like you were able to have still a an amazing experience um, from your own home and balance out seeing your friends and your family. So that's great to hear. Um, the next question has been a popular one in the Q&A um, is what are the dining halls like, Sophie and, and Luke? Um, and where was your favorite place to eat other than the dining halls? And Luke, why don't we start off with you as a Harvard College student, too? <laughs> uh, okay. What? The dining halls are, the food is like, okay. But what I really like about it is it's so convenient. Like there is nothing, it, it's incomparable in that you can just walk in, there's food available for you. You grab your food, you find a group of friends or you make one and then you eat your food and you're out and you can focus on like everything else you want to focus on. Make it, it makes your day so much easier not having to make a decision like, what am I going to eat today? The food is just out for you and you just pick what you like and you go. It makes it so easy. And that convenience is legitimately invaluable. You save so much time by just going to the dining hall and eating your meals there. And on top of that, if you do it consistently with a group of friends, it just becomes a check-in point in the day. We're like, we're all eating the same meal at like 6 p.m. for dinner or something. Um, and so that's why I was saying before, like, yeah, a group of my proctees, every time I'd walk in, they'd be like, Luke's about to walk in soon. Then I'd walk in, they'd all see me and point at me. <laughs> Um, so that was really nice. But when I don't eat in the dining hall, um, I generally might do so like maybe once every two weeks or once a week. 
my favorite place is called El Jefe's. It's if they have Mexican food there. I really like their burritos and their bowls. Um, and if you go there, you also have to try Felipe's, which they have like, I guess, kind of a rivalry with. I'm definitely Team Jefe's. They both have good food. Um, but my close runner up is also Falafel Corner. I get their chicken shawarmas. So good. There's so much good food in the square. And so I do recommend that you try some of it. Fantastic. And yeah, I hear from so many people that there is this, re there really is a rivalry. So when you join us this summer, everyone, you'll have to let us know which one you like better. And Sophie, what about you? How did you um, enjoy the dining hall experience? And what was one of your favorite places um, in Harvard Square or in the Boston area? Yeah, I would echo Luke that the food in the dining halls is okay. But my favorite part about the dining halls is that they're super social. Um, like whenever you go in, everyone there wants to talk to you, both as like uh, a summer school student and now as a first year here. If you go down and just sit at any table, the people there will strike up conversation with you. They'll tell you about what their class has been like, what they've been doing, where they're from, all those kind of things. You can literally just sit down with anyone and have a really great time um eating so I know like going in I was kind of nervous because I didn't know anyone I was like oh I'm gonna go to the dining hall and I'm just gonna have to sit because I don't know anyone um but they were always super social I always had a good time going in outside of the dining hall I would say my favorite place in Harvard Square is Zinnikin's which is a authentic Belgian waffle place it was my favorite as a summer school student and it is still my favorite I go there more than I should um, but another place I would recommend is the Smith Campus Center it has a lot of like study spaces where I spent a lot of time doing my work at summer school and they have a lot of just like tiny restaurants in there, like a bagel place and a smoothie place. Um, so that's a great spot to grab something to snack on while working. Perfect. That's a great point about the Smith Campus Center. That's a all purpose space uh, to utilize during the summer. Just a few more questions. Uh, Luke, for you. What advice would you give high school students planning on applying to college or how to incorporate the experience of the summer program into their application? I would say like there are two main steps. The first is to engage as much as you can. And the second is to write while you're there. Um, when I say engage, I know that I know that's an easy answer. Like, oh, yeah, do as much as you can. Um, but I say that because I mean, I'm not an admissions officer, but I imagine what they're looking for is prove to me that you're a student who will be successful at this school and will take advantage of everything we have to offer and by translation will be so and a successful graduate. Um, this is your opportunity to show that like you can really go to Harvard Summer School. We have so many things for you to do and so many opportunities for you to make friends, but also learn from your professors. Take advantage of them. A couple of them probably will be outside of your comfort zone. Like, and they don't even have to be the academic things. It could just be like, I'm going to go to a karaoke night and sing my heart out <laughs> in front of other people. That's an experience that you can write about. And it shows that anyone can just take a class, right? Not everyone can do that though. Um, and when I say write about it, I mean, you can really write about it to take maybe one night a week to reflect on like, who are you and what do you want? And like, what are you going forward to? Or like, what are you going towards? Um, and this process of just engaging and writing about how you're feeling about what you're engaging with is just going to be a cycle of refining. Now, what do I, what am I engaging with and why am I engaging with it? Why do I really like this? Then after you have a summer of writing about like, what have I been doing and who am I and what do I want out of life? Writing your college application is you have so much material for it. It's going to be a lot easier for you. It won't be the first time that you're writing about yourself, which can, at least for me, when I was writing my application felt very I didn't like it. I didn't like writing about myself <laughs> at first, um, but I guess it worked. But I do recommend practicing it. First engage, then write and repeat. That's a fantastic plan and some great tips. All right. So this next question will be our last question for the panel. Um, and I'll start off with Michaela. If you could, would you do the secondary school program again? Yes, I would. I gained so many skills from it that I can use in high school and definitely in college. Um, I got more than just the skills. It was a very special experience because online I was able to interact with graduate students and students at Harvard currently, as well as Harvard professors, um, which was just very different than just working with kids your age in high school or um, your teachers at high school. 
and overall, including what I did outside of the classroom. So like the activities I mentioned before, everything that I did, I enjoyed. It was a very enjoyable summer experience. It wasn't like, oh, I have to do school during the summer. It was fun. Um, I enjoyed the learning of it. And I just think that the skills that I gained from it, I would definitely want to have. They they're not something that I could have gone somewhere else. Harvard really was able to give them to me through the classes and the unique activities that they offer. Um, and I think that they're going to be really great for me for everything I do in life. So I would definitely do it again. Awesome. Well, that's great to hear. And and Sophie, I know that you're in college now, but if you could, would you do the pre-college program again? I absolutely would. I think there are a few things that make me say that. The first, um, as I kind of touched on before, like I really got a much clearer idea of, of what I want to study in college. Um, like I said, I took a, a course on math and social justice. I had already been planning to go into college to study computer science. Um, and now that I took that course, I'm considering doing a secondary in philosophy because it just opened my eyes about like what more is possible to do. Like even with a STEM degree. Um, I also, uh, as Michaela has said, like made so many friends uh, and, and Luke said as well that I still keep in touch with. Um, some of them are here at Harvard with me now, some are in university um, in the US or even abroad, but I, I still talk to them all very frequently. Um, and we all got super close, even though we only spent two weeks together. And the final thing that I thought was really great about the program, specifically as someone who did it as a rising senior, was that I learned a lot more about what I was actually looking for in a university, specifically the campus. Um, to be fully honest, I was kind of unsure about Harvard's campus going in. I wasn't sure that was the environment that I was looking for in a university, but I ended up falling in love with the campus while I was there, which helped me uh, in my decision ultimately to attend here. But it also helped me my senior year as I was making decisions about what colleges I wanted to apply to, because it gave me a much better idea of what I was looking for in a college and a college campus, which was very, very useful, um, especially since I wasn't able to visit all of the colleges I was applying to, to kind of have that benchmark. So all of those two things have really impacted my experience, both senior year of high school and freshman year of college. So I would definitely do the program again. Fantastic. Those all sound like three things that would sell me. So <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Sophie, Michaela, and Luke uh, for your insights. And thank you to everyone for the thoughtful questions you've been sending in. We are now going to move to our live Q&A portion. Uh, I would love to welcome pre-college program director, Dr. Jacqueline Newcomb, and secondary school program director, uh, Bill Hollinger. Welcome, Ms. Newcomb and uh, Mr. Hollinger. Uh, thanks for being here today. We have a couple questions for you. Awesome. All right. So the first question I have for you is, how should students choose between the programs? Is one better for younger students versus the other? Um, Jackie or uh, Ms. Newcomb, how can, uh, how can someone make this decision or what would you recommend? Sure. I don't think it matters, uh, if, you know, if you're going to be a rising junior, a rising senior, or um, you can choose either program. If you're going to be a rising college student, then you're going to need to choose the secondary school program because pre-college isn't open to students who are graduating. Uh, but it gives students an opportunity to really experience what college is like, as well as what Harvard is like. And, you know, as, so as Sophie mentioned, you need to figure out what type of institution you would like to apply to, whether it's Harvard or somewhere else. And this gives you a really good idea. Do I wanna live in a city? Is this too urban? What do I wanna be at a liberal arts institution? How much rigor do I wanna take? You know, those kinds of things. I would say that our courses are pretty similar in terms of the amount of coursework and rigor. One is just more compact than the other. And of course, if you're doing the secondary school program, you can apply that credit when you go to college, whereas pre-college is about learning for learning's sake, not worrying about a letter grade, just taking the opportunity to learn something new. Um, but I would say that both are equally uh, intense in terms of the amount of coursework. Uh, Mr. Hollinger, do you want to add anything? Uh, thank you, Dr. Newcomb. I really don't have anything to add to that wonderful answer of yours. Um, I just, I do want to thank the panel, though. Uh, great to have so Sophie. Michaela, thank you so much for coming. And Luke, you have been and always were a great proctor, and I hope you come back again next summer. 
Awesome, that's great to hear. And another uh, question for the two of you is, what are you looking for in applications? Um, Mr. Hollinger, if you want to start off with uh, what your team is looking for. Uh, it's a great question. Um, we have a number of people who read the applications. We have committees. Uh, if if we're undecided, we we let the whole committee look at look at an application, and uh, we we you know we take them very seriously. We read the essays. Um, we're looking for students who we think can do the work, uh, and who we think want to do the work. And I, I I think that may say it all. Really, we're just we're looking for students who want to come, and uh, or or online, you know, um, take these amazing courses from this incredible Harvard faculty and uh, um, and learn some things. Awesome. Dr. Newcomb, do you have anything to, to add? I would say that it's really important that you're authentic. We want to hear your voice. We spent a bit of time recently talking about generative AI and the impact it's had on students and learning. And we think it's really important that we hear from you and not chat GPT. So be sure to be authentic in your application. We don't ask for a very long writing samples. We just ask you know, four very short questions. We're looking for a paragraph or two at most because um, we're reading thousands of applications. So please write a paragraph or two. Um, and we wanna see that you're taking the most rigorous coursework available to you at your high school. So if you've never taken um, you know, accelerated classes it could be intense, you know, it could be difficult for you to do well in our program. However, not every school offers, you know, coursework at the IB or the AP or the honors level. And we understand that. So we'll also ask that your counselor submit a profile so we can see what your school offers as well. Awesome. All great points. And kind of on the same note, um, to Sophie and Michaela, how was the application process for Harvard Summer School and how long did it take? Um, Michaela, if you wanted to jump in and tell us about your application process. Um, I thought that the application process was not horrible at all. It wasn't some huge um, long essay or anything. There were a couple written questions that I had to answer. It probably took me like a week or so just because I was going back and reviewing um, to make sure that I, everything I was writing, I was able to say everything I wanted to say. Um, I think that as long as you are off being authentic, you know what what you want to do, why you want to go to Harvard Summer School, um, then it's not horrible at all. You're just they, you guys just want to, you know, share why you want to be there. Um, and that's kind of all I think you guys are looking for. So, Awesome. Thank you. And Sophie, do you have anything to add about your um, admissions process? Um, I think mine was pretty similar. I would echo a lot of what Michaela said, especially like the importance of authenticity. My advice too would be to start on it as soon as possible. I think writing about yourself is one of the things that's kind of hard to do last minute because it does take time to like think about it. Um, and go back to it. So I'd recommend looking at the the prompts when they are released um, and taking a couple of days to really think about them and get your ideas kind of formulated and then take the time to write it and have someone else read it over for you and revise it. Uh, but all in all, it, it doesn't take too long. I, I would agree with about a week, maybe two. Awesome. Well, thank you for uh, your insight into that. And this will be our last question for the panel. Um, do students have access to the library, museums, and other Harvard resources while they're Harvard Summer School students? Um, Dr. Newcomb or Mr. Hollinger, if you want to add a little bit more uh, information about whether they have access to those things. Sure, and our panelists were nodding, so yes, the answer <laughs> is yes. Um, you receive a Harvard ID. It gives you access to campus buildings, uh, several museums, actually all of our museums on campus, but we have several. Um, we have art museums, natural history museums, um, anthropological museums. We also give you access to libraries, including borrowing and electronic resources, uh, some software and all of our athletic facilities. But we, in addition to that, we also offer a tremendous number of co-curricular events, trips, uh, college readiness sessions. So, you know, the panelists have already talked about that and just you'll have plenty to do. 
I, I think it's important to realize that when you come to Harvard in the summer as a high school student, you are a Harvard student and you do have access to all of the facilities and resources of the university. That's a great point. And I think that's a great uh, note to end on. So thank you all uh, for your responses and for such a great panel. Um, before we go, if you did not get your question answered tonight, or if more arise, please contact us at inquiry at summer.harvard.edu or call us at 617-495-4024. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels and stay tuned for the webinar recording. Uh, this will be sent to your email or you can access it on the Harvard Summer School YouTube channel. And we would also like to invite you all to join us on November 13th, 2023 at 7 p.m for an information session called Everything You Need to Know Before You Apply. We'll explore our program offerings and offer insider tips about successful applications um, in advance for our uh, application open date of December 1st. Thank you all so much for joining us and we hope to see you this summer. Bye everyone. <laughs>